Hi and welcome to my channel. In this video, I want to show you how easy it is to create many-to-many -many relationships using the new version of Entity Framework. As you know, the new version of Entity Framework along with uh, .NET 5 is out. It is still in RC edition, but uh, we accept, expect no major changes in the future releases and the final version would be out in a couple of weeks. And so it's a good time to see what's new and how we can use the new features. And many too many relationships was always a problem with any framework. Uh, you had to go through a couple of steps to make that happen. But with the new version of any framework, it's very easy and I'm going to show you how it's done. I'm going to start by creating a new project. I am going to create a new ASP.NET Core application and let's name it my mini demo and create I am going to pick empty project using ASP.NET Core 5 and let's remove the configure for HTTPS this is a demo application and we don't need that and let's take a look at this part which is saying that we are using the template of .NET 5 RC1 edition and let's create a project so the project is ready and I can run it using Kestrel everything is working perfectly fine you can see the hello world message right here and it's from a startup file and we are using a context response there is no razor pages or controllers and actions this is just plain text and that's enough for us because in this video we are focusing on how to create many to many relationships and uh, the main part of the video would be working on entity framework so let's add a new folder as we always do and call it data for our entity framework and let's add a new class and call it app db context So next, uh, we are going to inherit from DB context, which is a class that is from Entity Framework. And to do so, we need to add a package. So let's go to Manage NuGet Package. And in here, we are going to browse. and look for Entity Framework I can install Entity Framework Core and make sure that you have this checked include pre-releases to get the latest version because we are still in preview, pre-release and we need to have this box checked let's install the project I accept the licensing and let's see if we have our DB context. Yes, we can add it using, and now we can start doing our code first and create a database from this DB context. Now that we have our DB context, we can add models to it and ask code first to generate database for us. But first, let's create the models. I'm gonna add a new class. Call it a student. And let's add a property of ID. And a property of a stream. Call it name. That's enough for us for now. It's a very simple class with ID and a name. And let's also add a course class. 
a little course and it's a public int id just like the other one also let's add string and name of the course that's enough for us again we are going to create very simple tables and add many to many relationship between them so we have two classes a student and course each student can be in multiple courses and in each course you can have multiple students so the relationship between a student and course is a many-to-many -many relationship and to add the many-to-many -many relationship in NTP Framework Core 5 we can just go ahead and add another property call it um, of our collection of course name it courses and uh, we can do the same on courses and add a collection of a student and name it students there's a typo here yeah, fix it now if we generate our database we are going to have a many-to-many -many relationship and there will be a class or a model generated in the background uh, to save the relationship between a student ID and course ID and we will see how it works later but for now let's create our database and to do so it's easier to add options to our DB context and pass it to base class uh, so let's add a new constructor public app DB context and let's add DB context options call it options and let's pass it to base class with options in this way we can set the collection string in our startup file in configure services and it's basically the better method to work with db context or entity framework or code first so then we add this uh, DB, two db sets prop db set student and let's call it students also let's add another one db set course let's say call it courses and you're done with our DB context. I can always separate these classes into different file, mm, but we don't need to do that right now. There was an option in here to do that. Let's uh, yes, move move uh, type to student.cs or move type to course.cs but we don't have to it's a very simple project it's a demo project so that's enough for us now let's go and add a package to work with sql server to use sql server in your projects and with entity framework you need to install a different package and that would be entity framework core and let's and that's it microsoft entity framework core sql server you need this package to work with sql server and if you are using mysql or sqlite or any other uh, sql based database there probably would be a different package for that but in our case we are using sql server and I can just go ahead and install this package okay now that we have our package installed 
you can see it right here we can go to configure services and use services add db context and add active context as our generic type then we need to pass options we are going to use only one line of code here so we do not we don't need the brackets let's say options use sql server and this extension method comes with the new package that we have installed if you don't have this package you won't see this use sql server here then i need to specify my connection string and i'm going to paste it right here i'm using sql, SQL express and uh, the catalog name would be my course db and that's it let's move this line see if there's any problem we need semicolon right here so we are ready and we can start using our database and code first here now that we have a, we have our connection string in place we can add a new migration and create the database using code first so let's go to package manager console and add dot migration and for some reason we don't see the command in here it's not working if i use tab here i can find many comments but there is no migration it happens sometimes if you are uh, not using the tools package so let's go to our dependencies and manage new get package and this time look let's look for ntt framework core tools and install that one too um, maybe we have to um, search it in this place yes this is what we want and uh, let's check if it's the latest version and then install i accept so let's go back to our project and dash use this migration this time you see the migration method or command here and i can name my first migration as init uh, or anything else but if you want then there's no really any constraints and about that you can enter and see what happens at this stage your project will be built and then all your entity framework code would be processed and uh, any framework will generate a code for you to uh, update your SQL Server database. So if we look at the generated code, you can see in op method that we are creating a table for courses and a table for students and also a table for course student that has two columns one is courses id and students id and that is usually how we create many to many relationships in sql server and as you can see it's handled by your entity framework and you don't have to do anything and everything works just fine there are foreign keys primary keys and also all the um, other constraints that you need everything is in place so if you are happy with that then uh, let's uh, create our database by running update dash database and i can use tab to uh, copy the command here and I enter and wait for database to be generated in my sql server so in package manager console we see this message that says done which means we are done with creating the database and updating it 
So let's go to SQL Server and find our database. So we have our new database and um, there is four tables in it. This one is for migration history and uh, you are not going to touch it anytime. And there are two tables, courses and students. And this one is the one that we have been waiting for. As you can see, the relationship between courses and students is a many to many relationship. And if I go to this course student, I see two columns and it is holding the many to many relationship inside this part. I don't have to create any classes to make this happen. It just works because we are doing this I collections inside a student and inside courses and by specifying these two properties we are saying you are asking any framework to generate a many to many relationship in the background in older versions we had to use fluent api uh, to config this kind of relationship but now it's just a lot easier and we can, we can just go ahead and uh, set two collections and everything works the way we expect so that's it for today as you as you saw i created a new project added entity framework and necessary packages and created a very simple many-to-many -many relationship in sql server database thanks for watching please like share and subscribe